The Blood Sucking Fiend series was my take on vampires, but what I wanted to do different with it is that they don't get the instruction book. He was ahead of the game when it came to vampires. Hi, my name is Stephanie and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking to author Christopher Moore about his latest book, Bite Me. Could you tell me about Bite Me, which is the third in the Blood Sucking Fiends series? In the last book, the vampires decided they didn't want to kill people, but they needed to feed. And there was a homeless guy who um, actually I saw on Market Street in San, in San Francisco, who was the model for this, who had a sign that said, I am homeless and my cat is huge. And so they rent this huge cat to feed off of it. At the end of the last book, the huge shaved cat, Chet, gets turned into a vampire. So this book is basically Chet, the huge shaved vampire cat, is turning all the stray cats in San Francisco into vampires. And he's feeding off of the homeless people and other people who aren't fast enough to get out of their way. And our vampires, as well as their minion, Abby Normal, um, who's teen goth girl Abby Normal and her uh, boyfriend, Fu, have to save the city from vampire kitties. I know that you do a lot of research for your books. What was the process like for Bite Me? A lot of it is just observing things in the city and then and working them in. I use historical elements from San Francisco um, in this series. Uh, Emperor Norton, who was a homeless guy who declared himself Emperor of San Francisco, is an ongoing character in my San Francisco books, as were the dogs, Bummer and Lazarus. They were existed in Mark Twain's time, and he wrote about them. These books are a little more contemporary in what they do, and a lot less historical than some of my... My last book, Fool, was uh, King Lear. Um, Shakespeare's King Lear is told from the point of view of the fool. That kind of book takes a lot of research, whereas this one is just kind of walk around the neighborhood and look at goofy things. Could you tell me about the writing process for the third book in a trilogy? I mean, are you really conscious about trying to tie up loose ends? I think so. I think, I think uh, in this one particular I wanted to. The last book had a sort of unsatisfying ending for me and the readers, I think. It just sort of left the characters in, literally in limbo. I don't like to end stories so much as leave infinite possibilities for life going on for the characters, and I think that's what happens with this, but the, but the story arc itself wraps up. So, yeah, I was conscious of that as I was writing it.